Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ariana Uribe and today's video is going to be my everyday makeup routine, which is what you see right now. I realize a lot of YouTubers don't do intros anymore. Granted, they are pretty well-established YouTubers and most of the time they don't need that big of an introduction, but intros stress me out. So we're just gonna leave it at that. Like I mentioned, today's video is just going to be a everyday makeup tutorial. For skin prep, I only use one product and that's the Peach and Lily Glass Skin Refining Serum. It just leaves a nice glow to the skin and I'm more of a glowy makeup look versus a matte makeup look. So anything glowy, dewy, I'm there for it. Before I continue, I'm just gonna point out that my central air is on. I don't know if you can hear it, but if you can, that's what it is. Please ignore it. And if you can't, then just forget I said any of this. I do my eyebrows first, and that's partially because I use the Anastasia Brow Freeze. I feel like when you're using any brow gel, brow glue product, if you do any type of makeup before, I feel like you obviously get makeup in your eyebrows. And then when you're trying to gel them down, you're messing with your forehead makeup, you're messing with your eyelid makeup. I just like to do eyebrows first and then just carefully apply makeup around them. That's just my preference. Again, everybody does their makeup differently. Like I said, I use the Anastasia Brow Freeze. This is literally like my second or third container of these literally the only thing that holds my eyebrows i used to use the nyx brow glue which i still really like it worked but i just feel like it didn't hold my eyebrows the same way this stuff does i like to just brush the product through my eyebrows first to make sure all the hair is coated and then i brush up this is just a spoolie from a pack that i bought on amazon so brush up as you can see, I do have some areas in my eyebrows that are sparser than others, but I kind of just try to manipulate the brow hairs to fill fill them in, kind of like kind of like that. Um, obviously, they're not gonna look perfect, and in like bright light, you can see them more obviously than you can when you're looking at me in person. So I kind of try not to stress about it too much. Also, if you did use this product and you found that it was creating white flakes, it didn't hold your eyebrows, whatever the case, you just didn't like it. I'm not saying you used it wrong, but just some tips if you wanna try it out again. Less is more, and it's best to use this product in a cold setting. I know that's really weird, but I feel like with any gel or brow gel, if you're using it in like a hot room or you're sweating, it's not gonna stick because of your sweat. <laughs> My room is usually always cold, so I don't usually have a problem with that, but if your room isn't freezing like mine is, I bought this little fan at Target in the dollar section for like three or five bucks, and I literally just have it blowing so that it dries in place, and I don't have to keep adding more, which is what makes it white and flaky. Okay, that is one eyebrow done. I'm gonna do the other one off camera and try to make them as even as possible, and then I'll be right back. Brows are done. This is what they look like, as you can see. I do prefer a fluffy brow, so that's usually how my eyebrows always look. After brows is when I start my base and I prime with the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. I loved, loved, loved their watermelon one. Loved it. I feel like that was the stickiest primer I've ever used. And I am pretty sure they discontinued it and replaced it with this. This one's also really good. This is like the third one I've gone through. I love it. But the watermelon one was just top tier petition for e.l.f. to bring it back. If you're not into sticky primers, it's understandable. Some people don't like the feeling. The whole point of sticky primers, like the Milk Hydro Grip, e.l.f. Power Grip, is exactly that, so that your makeup has something to grip to and it lasts longer. Some people don't even believe in primer at all. They think it doesn't make a difference. And if you don't see a difference, then to each their own, you know? Now, for foundation. Like I said, I am a dewy girl. I usually almost never go for matte foundations, partially because I have like normal to dry skin and partially because I just don't like the matte look. So with that being said, I always gravitate towards a natural looking or glowy or dewy foundation. So if you're ever wondering what foundation I'm wearing, 
it's always going to be one of these three. This one is the newest member to the family. This is the Lancome, I'm not even gonna attempt to say that, the Lancome Ultra Wear Care and Glow. This is their newest foundation. So good, literally skin-like, and I think this is the one I'm gonna use today. But this is the newest addition to my Dewy Foundation family. I've tried it a few times, so good so good i got the shade 105 w it is a pretty penny if you're looking for a medium coverage natural looking foundation and want to invest this is a good option i believe this retails for like 47 dollars like i said a pretty penny the one i was using a lot before the lancome one is this it Cosmetics cc nude glow it's a medium coverage skin tint and has spf 40 and it's 90 percent skincare so i like to say that the more often you use it the more skincare benefits you see because it's really made up of 90% skincare. So you're getting skincare benefits while wearing it. And usually people are like, oh, the more makeup you wear, the worse your skin looks and blah, blah, blah. Whatever, I think people who say that don't understand makeup at all. But I'm also super lazy when it comes to SPF, which is really bad. I know I need to work on that. But this has SPF 40, so when I wear this, I don't feel bad. And I know you're supposed to reapply SPF throughout the day, but again, something is something. This is also a pretty penny. Um, I don't know how much this is, but it is on the, you know, medium range of foundations. And this one, I have the shade Fair Light. It does run a little dark because this is a pretty dark shade for Fair Light. Um, so just keep that in mind if you want to buy this one. Now, if you're someone who doesn't want to spend a whole gift card on a foundation, or who doesn't wear makeup that often but still wants something to have for those special occasions wet and wild photo focus dewy foundation there is a matte version but again like i said i'm a dewy gal this one is so good so good i bought this when i have the slightest tan so it is a little too dark for me right now but it is so good i got mine in the shade cream beige again i am probably lighter than this now to actually apply the foundation. I am a brush girl. I used to be a religious sponge girl, but once I started buying higher end, more expensive foundations, I didn't want to risk wasting the product and having the sponge soak up all of it that I went to a brush and I found myself using a lot less. For today's video, I am using the Lancome one because it is the one I've been using most recently. And I want you guys to see how good this makes your skin look. I forgot to mention, this is the e.l.f. dual complexion. I always make it a point to get around my nostrils because I feel like that's where I always forget to apply foundation. But look at how good that foundation made my skin look. Like, it doesn't even look like I have foundation on. See, look, I forgot <laughs> under my nose. Before I do any brightening or concealing, I like to contour and bronze, and I use the Fenty Matchsticks. I first go in with the shade Amber, so I apply the contour in those areas and then I go in with the shade Mocha to bronze and I put this over, like right over where I put the contour, like that. And then here I just put it right under. To blend this out, I use the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer brush. <laughs> I already have a pretty small forehead, so I don't put too much product up here because I feel like it could just make my whole forehead look brown. So this is one side blended, and then I'm going to blend this side. I tap to blend out my contour and bronzer, just because I feel like swiping makes it streaky and the placing like unintentional and i always like to make sure that i'm blending it upwards and not bringing it down at all because the whole point is to make your face look lifted and contoured we're not done contouring yet i do contour my nose because i absolutely hate it i don't like tr like drawing straight on my nose i do it sometimes if i'm lazy but if i have time i do like to pick up the product on a brush and kind of place it exactly where I want it. I usually start by creating a little circle around like the point of my nose. Cute. 
If you see me look over here, it's because my big vanity mirror is over here. And it's kind of hard to do my makeup just based off of my phone. <laughs> and then I just do a straight line going up on both sides. I don't worry too much about my nails looking skinnier. I just want it to look like straight, you know? <laughs> After we're done with bronzer and contour is when I conceal. I have yet to find a concealer that I love as much as the Wet n Wild Incognito Concealer. So good, so underrated, nobody talks about it. Literally one of my favorites. I have it in two shades, light beige and fair. Obviously fair for brightening up a little more and then just light beige for concealing. I put it here in like a little kind of arrow looking thing on both sides. Okay, I put it here to kind of lift the face even more. I put it in the center of my forehead just for highlighting purposes. On the point of my nose, on the bridge of my nose, again for highlighting purposes. I have some dark pigmentation on the sides of my like on the bottom of my lip, which I don't really love. So I do like to place it here as well. I know I said I'm a brush girly now, but for concealer, I think I'll always be a sponge girly. I just find that since a sponge does soak a product, like I mentioned, it's removing excess product from my under eye, which is the main place that I don't want to look cakey and heavy because of all the fine lines that are there. I blend out this little inner corner first, and then I blend out the outer part and I kind of blend it upwards so it creates like this lift. Okay, repeat on the other side. And then you can even bring it the concealer up to kind of clean up your nose contour. <laughs> shade that I like to go in with. I put the lighter shade in the same areas that I put the other concealer but just in smaller amounts and then I do add some on the center of my chin. This helps create even more dimension by brightening up the smallest areas. You want to keep this focused in this area. Don't drag out your product. Don't bring it all the way down. Keep it in the area that you placed it. And then same thing with the outer corner. Like I mentioned multiple times already, I'm a dewy gal, which means I use way more cream products and powder products. So for blush, we're going in with the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush in the shade Hope. I know this contradicts what I literally just said and have been saying this whole video, but I don't like highlighter on my cheekbones, but I still like the glow. So I mix the Rare Beauty Blush with the Rare Beauty Illuminizer in the shade Enchant. I do use more blush than illuminizer, but that's just because the blush already has a dewy finish. To mix it and apply it, I go in with the e.l.f. Pretty Blush brush, and I just mix it on the back of my hand. I apply my blush towards the sides of my face, and then even like on my temples. I tried the whole like apples of the cheeks and the nose, and I just feel like it doesn't look right on me. So I keep it towards the sides of my face. This is how the skin is looking. Pretty good if I do say so myself. Now it is time to set the face and I'm going to go in with my holy grail powder, the one I will never switch up on, the Wet n Wild Photo Focus 
translucent powder. It's only six dollars, not to mention the size of this thing. And it also comes in a banana shape for Bessie's Blessed with Melanin. What a while just needs to sponsor me already. If you don't want to take my word on the powder, at least take my word on applying any powder you have with a Velour Puff, Powder Puff, whatever you call it. You can literally get a pack of like 10 of these for six bucks on Amazon. Before I set with powder, I need to show you guys my concealer because it's been sitting for a few minutes. And look at it, it like barely set in one line, one line. But obviously because I don't want it to stay like that, I'm gonna blend it out really quickly just before I go in with the powder. If you've never used one of these or just want to see how I use it, which is kind of the whole point of this video, I just dip it like that and then I tap it on the back of my hand to kind of get the excess powder off and then I go under. Again, I use very, very minimal powder, but look at the difference. Texture wear! Texture wear. Look, I'll do my forehead too before I set the other eye so you can see. Texture wear. This combination never ceases to amaze me. Look at it. Oh, look at it. I love this side. This side looks glowy and radiant and healthy and skin-like. But this side looks like a filter, like I have no texture. Anyways, let's just get, let, let's continue, let's continue. Now that I set my concealer and I don't have to worry about it creasing or moving, I'm going to set my bronzer and contour with the Juvia's Place Light Bronzer Palette. As you can see, this shade is very much loved. It is the more cool tone compared to this one, which is I think why I prefer it. I got this brush in a gift set Look how pretty in a giveaway that I won, so I don't know the name of it. I don't know the name of the brand, I'm sorry. But it is just this big fluffy brush. And again, I just go into this color, kind of tap off excess, make a little kissy face. I don't apply a lot because I kind of only use it to set the contour and bronzer in place. And then I use a little bit of this cool tone shade again to set the contour on my nose. My nose is the only area that I bake, but it's just to clean up the contour and again to make my nose look more straight. Say bake with air quotes because I don't let it sit for long at all. Like as soon as I finish placing it, I literally dust it off. And I use the Real Techniques setting brush. After I'm done with powders, I all the dewiness is gone from my face, as you can see. So what I do is use the e.l.f. Dewy Coconut Setting Mist. So good. And I shower in it. It's not fully dry, but I was getting impatient, so we're just gonna move on to mascara. Before we do though, I want to point out that that spray brought back the dewiness without changing the look of the powder. I'm someone who has to use the eyelash curler. I don't know how people just go straight in with mascara. I wish I could. My eyelashes are like pin straight and putting nothing but mascara and like hoping it'll curl just doesn't work for me. Now people say like, oh, you lose eyelash hairs, don't use an eyelash curler. It doesn't pull out hairs if your eyelash curler is clean. Like there should be no gunk or leftover mascara here because that is how you pull out eyelashes. But look at the difference and tell me that I shouldn't use an eyelash curler. I like to do one eye at a time because I feel like if I curl both, by the time I finish applying mascara to one eye, the other one's gonna fall already. For mascara, I'm using the L'Oreal Telescopic Waterproof Mascara. Again, if you're one of those people whose eyelashes fall like me, 
waterproof is probably your best bet. Okay, that is one coat of mascara. I'm gonna do the other eye off camera and then I'll be back. Mascara is done. One of the last steps is highlighter and I only apply it to my nose and my inner corners. I've been using the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek Highlighter in the shade Lunch Money for a while now. I really like it. It's like a cream to powder formula. Putting it on the tip of my nose is literally like my favorite thing. For my lip products, it usually depends on the day. Some days are a tinted lip balm, other days are a whole lip combo. For the sake of this video, I'll share a lip combo. One of the lip liners I gravitate towards the most is the NYX lip liner in New Truffle. I will never get over this specific color. For lipstick, I'm going in with the shade Yash from MAC. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but... But that's it. This is my everyday makeup look. Everything I showed is pretty much what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I genuinely hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you have any other ideas of things you want to see from me, either makeup related or not makeup related, feel free to comment them. If you want to see more of me and future content, please subscribe and follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I guess that's it, so I'm just going to finish this video off by saying thanks for watching and I love you guys.